Okay, right. Well, um, uh, thank you and welcome to the uh, to the meeting of the Transport Strategy Group um, of you know, uh, this Wednesday. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm I'm Stephen Gabriel, I'm the chair of this committee, um, and we've been working on transport issues. So. Um, I am going to slightly sort of amend the agenda and introduce Fiona. Fiona is a new projects officer for Transfer Strategy and also for the Climate Emergency Working Group. So I'm going to ask uh, Fiona if you could introduce yourself, please. Thank you very much, Stefan. It's, it's nice as there are a few new faces to have the opportunity just to explain a little bit about my background. So as Stefan said, I cover a climate emergency projects as well as your transport strategy project. And I'm a member of CAF's team um, at the town council. Um, my background is actually in meteorology. I worked at the Met Office on weather and climate research projects and then other corporate projects um, for 18 years. And then I also run my own environmental uh, climate consultancy business um, for 10 years. Um, and I, I live downstream uh, don't, don't look down on me too much, but I'm, I'm downstream in Cookham, um, where I have served here as a, a parish councillor, um, but I'm, I'm no longer um, sitting on the parish council. So I have some experience of transport projects um, at, at Cookham Parish Council. So um, I look forward um, to working with you all. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Fiona, very much. And certainly Fiona has worked very, very hard on the climate emergency and had some good success, which we'll report on um, for, for this transport strategy group. So um, I aim that this meeting is probably about 1.15, 1 hour and 15 minutes. Um, not that I'm curtailing the meeting at all, but if we could keep our comments short and sweet to the point, um, and we can have a really positive, constructive meeting. Uh, Councillor Reisman is just joining. Hello there. Or Ian, just, just joined. Right, apologies for absence. We have one from Dave McEwen. Fiona, any more? No. Um, uh, Cam? Yes, uh, the Mayor has sent his apologies, actually, Chair, as well. Okay, right, so uh, David and, and the Mayor. Are there any declarations of interest on the agenda tonight? No. Um, three. We have. We don't have any members of the public, do we, Fiona? No, we don't. But I think um, David Dickey wanted to raise a couple of points from the public gallery that, okay. are, that are not on the agenda. Uh, they were they were AOB type items, but we can do them now if you wish. No, we, we don't have AOBs on okay, so fine. the agenda, so do um, them. Not on the agenda are two items that I'm quite interested in. One is a, a, a wider and better implementation of 20 mile an hour zone through Henley. Yeah. Uh, um, I speak to so many people who don't know where it is. And it's obviously very difficult to enforce it anyway. <clears throat> but I actually think it ought to cover the whole town because I think there's so many entrance roads where people travel quickly, um, whether it's Hartson Road, St Andrews Road, Gravel Hill, you know, you just go on and on around the town. People are doing speeds that are just too much. So I'm keen to progress this. I appreciate we've got a foothold. I think that's really good news. But in Greener Henley with, with Clean Air parameter and I are keen to... There is an organization called Twenties Plenty. They've been very influential in the country in getting uh, 20 mile an hour zones. Oxford County Council have now, I think, based put a motion through in principle to move towards 20 mile an hour zones. But we just feel we want to get people to slow down and on those roads I mentioned, especially. And they've got some very good sort of sticker things that go on um, waste bins. You stick them on the side and they say 20 square. Well, once a week, everyone sticks out bin now and there's a lot of people saying 20 is plenty, 20 is plenty. So we, we're going to buy a few and start out with that. But I'd like to see us think about moving more to 20 more uh, across the town. 
Okay, David, we'll pop that on the next agenda as well. Right. That's, my that, that's my first one. The other one is a subject called School Streets. Yep. Um, I've got Badgemore School registering an interest in it. I now think I've found a way to get Trinity to also register an interest. So that's enough for the time being anyway. But I also think that's another project because if we want to control traffic in the town, reduce pollution, etc. 20 mile an hour is a terrific thing for reducing pollution, by the way. Um, if we want to do that and, and, and improve children's health, we've got to embark on those projects. Enough for now, but thank you for listening. Right. No, we'll we'll pop those on the agenda. And certainly from a count, county council point of view, those are two that we they have been moving on. Yep. Um, you know, to reduce the cost of signage and the traffic regulation order for the 20 mile an hour. So therefore, yes, yeah, we would have a constructive chat about that at the next meeting. Yeah, thank you. Right. Okay, I'm going to close public participation session. Right, item four minutes of the 17th of <coughs> August, which um, have been attached to your agendas. I will propose acceptance of them. Can I have a seconder? Yeah, Patrick. Thank you. Are there any comments before we approve them? Okay, I take that as none. Fine. So therefore, um, just a, a quick vote to approve the minutes. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Um, right. Um, five. To receive updates of three things um seven and a half ton environmental weight limit i will take and then david will briefly <coughs> talk about air quality monitoring and then walking signs from fiona um and just to say we had a meeting with sodc this afternoon simon hill and um ian matton and carmen who are the air quality officers and uh, as you will see later in the agenda when we when we talk it was very 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 positive um you know the, there are you know certain things we can move on anyway five one seven and a half ton environmental weight restriction the the aim of henley for a long time has been to have a seven and a half ton environmental weight limit for the town it's not to do with the weight of the bridge. The bridge is so strong, and I've done this before, that you can land a jumbo jet on it and it won't affect it. Environmental weight limit takes into account the heavy lorries, yes, the vibration on historic buildings, the narrowness of the pavements, and also pollution characteristics. Three or four weeks ago, we had great success at SODC when a motion was passed to approve, um, well, the working towards of a seven and a half ton environmental limit. So SODC are on board. In March, I will be bringing forward a motion to Oxfordshire County Council to actually say the same that Henley wants a um, seven and a half ton limit for, uh, for Henley and the surrounding area. It does not mean that heavy lorries cannot come in and deliver to Henley. It means that any through lorries are deflected onto the major trunk roads. As you know, from what I presented in the past, um, there have been three transport studies as part of the neighbourhood plan. And on the particular day that Peter Brett stroke Stantec, who are the, our traffic consultants, on a particular day, 151 lorries came into Henley and 131 went straight through. So there were only 20 delivering to Henley. So therefore, there is... Um, I think a great need to cut out this through traffic, but any lorry legitimately having business within Henley, then they will be allowed in to deliver. Um, 
The second thing is I've been round to most of the parishes around Henley. Um, uh, Son in Common, Highmore, Bixon Assenden, Nettlebed, uh, Rotherfield Greys. I have still got to get a meeting with Rotherfield Peppard. I've also been to Stoke Row. I've been to all of those parishes to explain what Henley wants. And they are all incredibly supportive of us. They actually want it because they believe it will protect their villages as well. Because if there are heavy lorries being stopped from coming into Henley, then they will also be stopped from coming into the villages as well. So this is a long-term project. It's been voted on by Henley Town Council and also this transport strategy group. So I'm just giving you an update. And in summary, it's this. SODC have passed the motion, which is good news. It was um, 31 four and one abstention, no votes against. I've been around all of the villages around Henley and talked to them. Oh, another thing to mention is that John Halsall, who uh, is part of this meeting from Wokingham, has expressed uh, great support for the seven and a half ton limit, including the offer of some funding towards it, towards the implementation of it. And finally, um, uh, I will be taking a motion in March to OCC for their approval as well. So that's a quick summary of where we're at at the moment. I'll take um, a couple of questions just for a short time if anybody wishes to ask me any questions. Ian? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I've had 40 years experience of driving heavy goods vehicles. And I've never had any problem driving through Henley with a 50 foot trailer and a drilling rig on it, round New Street, Reading Road, over the bridge, Grays Road. Now, nobody's ever been injured in these places. Now, why Mrs. Schumas is kicked up a stink over since COVID. She's lived there for nine years and she kicks up over COVID when it started, about all the problems with big lorries coming through Henley. Henley lorries have been coming through Henley for over 100 years. Nothing's ever fallen down. Now, I might suggest to Mrs. Chumas, if she don't like it, move out of Henley. She's been there nine years, and she kicks up one year when we're in COVID. Okay. I'm sorry. You're going to get seven and a half ton lorries coming into Henley, for one Arctic, which is 32 tonne, you will require eight lorries to carry that one load. <clears throat> well, that isn't part... Sorry, Ian. I, sorry, I'll let you finish. Go for it. What's going to cause more pollution? More traffic, mm. more pollution, more traffic holdups. Now, that is my point of view. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just... Uh, I won't comment on the first bit, um, but I will comment on the second bit. You know, we are not stopping 32 tonners coming into Henley. So it's not a question of us saying, oh, well, you've got to have five, five, seven and a half tonne. One moment, let me finish. Right. It's not a que question of you saying that we've got to have five, seven and a half tonners to make up the 32 or the 42 tonners. It, that's not the case. Any lorry legitimately delivering to Henley will be allowed in. The big Waitrose lorries are allowed. Sainsbury's lorries, Tesco yes. lorries, they're all allowed. So we're, we are not banning lorries from Henley. What we're saying is that if you have no legitimate business in Henley, go stay on the big main trunk roads. That's all. Okay. Patrick. Yeah, uh, just to say that not everyone's as careful as Ian. And there was a, a German, young German tourist, a young girl or woman, was killed just outside the Angel on the Bridge with a lorry turning uh, cut across the pavement. I think that's indicative of the danger that we put pedestrians in <laughs> when these very large lorries, and we're now talking about, I believe, 40, 40 tonners, not just the 32 tonners, um, when these things come through, you know, that's the danger we put pedestrians under. And as I said, not everyone's as careful as you, Ian. 
And these are people that have probably driven all the way up from Dover. You know, they're, they're, they're on long shifts. And I think that we could do without them. We could do with them sticking to the M40, the M4, the A43. You know, those are the strategic roads that can take the traffic through around South Oxfordshire. And that's what I, I that's why I support this very strongly. I, I agree with you on that one. But if you recall, that young German girl got killed by the angel. Sorry, I, I don't was a, think... Was a coach, was a coach, not a lorry. Yeah, yeah. it was a coach, yeah. Okay, right. Okay. Um, anybody else, Jackie? Uh, yes, I just wanted to ask as part of the equation, looking at the whole thing going forward, what's being looked at in terms of the condition of the road surfaces, because that's part of the overall picture of pollution noise environment yes yes and certainly the um certainly the county council needs to do something about new street and by the kenton theater it's uh it's it's it, it's one of one of the main routes from the fair mile down and up to white hill um there are patches of the reading road that need need doing as well but uh, generally speaking, you, the other main routes have been done and they're, they're, they're pretty adequate. So, yes, but you're right. If you have a lorry going across a poor surface, then the vibrations will be exacerbated. Yes, you're right. David? Yeah, the, the corner by Savills is caused by really heavy vehicles leaning in on the inside corner. And it gets to start. I mean, I don't know how much you've got to reinforce that if you continue to let them come through. But they're, yeah. they're making it, and they're, you can see they go on the pavements because the pavements are crushed as well. They're in really poor state as well. The other thing I want to say about protecting the buildings is when I first started with this, um, I went and sat and chatted with Amanda and Miss, Miss Julas. And we sat in her front room. And if you just feel what the lorries do as they go by, in her house, you wouldn't want anybody. Else. I mean, I'm, I'm. You say move away. I'm amazed she stays there, but she put so much effort into rebuilding it uh, that that position. I think she, you know, she just fall in love with the place. But the vibration in a house, and and all the people down New Street have signed the petition as well, and and they've got uh, petition, you know, posters <clears throat> up in their windows. They all they're all suffering terribly, and I think we. The lorry drivers, yes, some of them, a lot of them are careful. Some of them aren't, but I don't care. Level, you should not live, have to live in conditions like that. I agree. I have been in houses down New Street, just above the Kenton Theatre. And if you're standing in the living room, when a lorry goes past, you know, the vibration shakes the whole of the building. Um, I will say that I am... Um, I am at one with Amanda Tumas uh, and the campaign. Um, I think it's uh, it's a very good thing. And actually, this is on the back of motions that have been passed by this committee that we want the limit, and also by Henley Town Council as well yeah. that have ratified the decisions. So therefore, um, I applaud Amanda for actually getting this campaign going. And uh, at the moment, we've got two thousand four hundred signatures. Um, on the petition um, to actually bring this. Anyway, uh, the idea of this item was just to brief you on what I have done or we have done, and um, I think we've we I think we're all fairly clear. Ian, final comment on this particular uh, item, please. Thank you. Uh, DEFRA's calculations, uh, latest calculations, uh, reckon that's forty-five thousand people die in the UK every year prematurely as a result of air pollution, primarily from, uh, uh, from HGVs. Uh, if you extrapolate that downwards uh, to Henley, that means about nine people every year in Henley die prematurely from, uh, uh, for, as a result of air pollution. And of course, it'll be a lot more because we have to, uh, 10 streets covered by an air quality management area. So that's nine people every year. If Ian clark has been driving a, an HGV around Henley for 40 years, that's 360 people that he's been part of killing 
I'm sorry to put it so bluntly, but th this is a ma uh, with 45,000 people every year. That's that's about half of COVID. We're, we're doing all sorts of things to prevent people dying from COVID, and we should be taking action on this. Regarding the safety issue, uh, three people were killed in quick succession in the early 90s, including that uh, 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 that unfortunate uh, uh, a German tourist. And one person was killed on the junction at uh, right in the town centre by the traffic lights by a large HGV, which didn't even realise it had hit anyone and moved off and was uh, stopped, stopped 10 miles down the road. The, the air pollution is a serious matter. I've lived, I lived in 80, Bell, in 80 Bell Street, two doors down from Amanda Tumas for 20 years. I greatly admire the work Amanda has done. I've had my disagreements with her and other issues, as people might know, but Amanda, I'd like to praise for the work she does. And if you live in one of those streets, yes, the whole house rattles as the HGVs go past. If you clean your windows, the next day they're covered in black soot. Uh, and though that black soot is going in people's lungs and it's killing people. And that's what it's doing. It's not just killing them, it's giving them emphysema, bronchitis, uh, asthma, all sorts of uh, diseases, which aren't necessarily just killing them, but they are making their life unpleasant and unhealthy. And uh, I, I think it's, it's high time. I've been pressing this for 15 years now. It's high time that we've pushed on this. And I'd like to congratulate Amanda and, uh, and Stefan on the work they've done to bring this to what looks like the right conclusion. So what you're saying then, Ian, is more people should die then instead of nine or out 45 out of 15 years, a lot more people should have died. I'm sorry, you're talking rubbish. Right. You're, ju you're just warmongering. <clears throat> okay, right, we're going to leave that one. And actually, Ian has raised air quality, so it conveniently takes us to number the, the next item, which is uh, David, um, air quality monitoring. Right, well, supporting the HTV campaign, we put some more six more diffusion tubes on the Bell Street Northfield end uh, part of the town. Uh, I have to change them monthly. We've put our, we've got our first month in with the back to the research lab and got some results. And it shows a high reading, above legal limit type reading. I've got to be careful after this afternoon. You know. It's okay. Uh, a, you know, a high reading uh, outside crude clothing and quite high readings down Northfield End, but not above the legal limits. But this is in COVID times. We know how quiet it is. Um, and, I, and I agree with you that HGVs do cause a lot of pollution. And well, I shouldn't, I, should, no, I won't say anymore, but there, and there are more HGVs and I've been out and studied it. And in fact, the research person I'm dealing with uh, in the lab, said her her husband drives HGVs, and he comes to Henley quite a lot right now because it's quicker and easier, because there aren't enough cars stopping them. So even more HGVs are coming through. So we put these readings in. Uh, the first time we made a little mistake uh, by in the installation right by the bridge. The second time outside crude clothing, the device was missing when we got back. So we haven't got a second one there, but we put our third lot out. And monthly, we should go through it. And I think SODC have said, and these aren't that expensive, uh, SODC have said, actually, you, you ought to go on all year and see what it's like post-COVID and keep an eye on it. So we have to think about that moving forward. It'd be worth, Fiona or David, just can you just give an indication of the cost of these? Because they are cheap. Oh, I think six for six months like that. I think it's hardly over £100. So a six-month study... We yeah, have to say 150 pounds if we want to do it again. Okay, is 100 to 150 pounds yeah, so for six really months? Good. Yeah, for six months. Okay, SODC just today said that we should we should feed the information to them on the six months, but um, they would probably want it to go for 12 months, so that's fine. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah, the, the other thing to notice is that down by the police station at the bottom of Gray's Road is we have a um, the only particulate monitor in the south of Oxfordshire, um, which is reading uh, PM 2.5s, the very small particles, PM 10s, and also nitrogen dioxide okay. yeah. and oxide. Um, and um, it's in the early stages of this, so we'll have to wait for a long time, well, 
for a few more months to get the full data on it. But there are indications, as I have reported in my district councillor's report, at every full council, there are indications that these readings are above the World Health Organization limits. And um, yeah, but, but, and they, but they, we learned today that you can have lots of peaks well above the limits, but the average over 24 hours means it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> and I've never seen a graph go quite so high and it's still safe. Yes. Because the time they massaged it over 24 hours. Yes, Patrick. Um, yeah, the, 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 the paper I read on health impact is that six minutes of excessive PM 2.5 is enough to create a heart attack. Yes, uh, I know. But... So, so this idea of averaging, I think, is a, is a, is a ludicrous one. Yeah, but DEFRA have told David, them to do David, it. David, so David, David one moment. Yeah, sorry. Patrick, yeah. can put your... Yeah. The other so points. The particular thing is going to be open for a good debate. In Duke Street, the monitor, we had 18 exceedances in the first 20 days of December. I think we've had six in January. So I'm keeping an eye on that. But again, with very low traffic, we're, get, we're exceeding the limits as far as I'm concerned. I know they've got to go through all their smoothing out but we'll get there. Thank you very much, Stephen. That's okay. Uh, any other comments, Fiona? Stephen, if, if working group members are minded to increase the current diffusion tube measurements for another six months, as SODC requested, perhaps we should have a vote on that to approve the expenditure, although it is modest. I think it would be appropriate to have um, a vote. I think we'll... I think we'll... I, I, I mean... How, how much of the six months are still to go? Well, we're in our third month right now. Yeah. Let's let's just wait. In, in March, we'll we'll have a proper item on the agenda, yeah, with the forecast, so that all members can just, uh, well, can either say yes or no to it. So we'll we'll do it then. Okay. Okay. Right, uh, Fiona, uh, walking posts. Um, 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 perhaps it's it's worth me introducing, explaining it, because Kath and I were working on it before. Yeah. The idea is that we passively encourage people to walk into the town. Yeah, it's the message is, don't, don't take your car, um, yeah, use Shanks and Pony. Um, and we've identified nine locations around the town. We've had tacit informal approval from OCC. They're, they're very nice wooden posts. They indicate the... Uh, the time it would take you to walk to the town um, and also the distance as well. It can also be put as part of a walking map that we will develop with Walkers are Welcome um, uh, and the rambling groups around. So it will be part of a, a map um, going forward. Sorry, Fiona, that was my brief summary introduction. Thank you. Um well, there's not a huge amount more to add. I guess I'm working with Walkers of Welcome um, to make sure that we're coordinated because they're proposing signage in some similar places and it would seem sensible to have one sign that addresses both issues rather than have so a couple of rather similar signs in the same place. So I'm coordinating that with Ali Hagendorn at Walkers of Welcome. I was very encouraged this afternoon by the positive indication that we got from SODC to, to fund 50% um, at least of the um, of the uh, the cost of the signage. Um, so if we can yeah. get that through quickly, then we can take advantage of that offer of funding yeah. from SODC. The just to explain, um, so you you've got the full picture. We've already, by the way, voted on this in the past, but it's uh, the walking posts are five thousand pounds installed of which um, SWC would be paying half of that. So it's Henley Town Council, two and a half thousand, SWC, two and a half thousand. And um, as Fiona said, that at the meeting this afternoon with SWC, there was str a strong indication that they would um, come up with their half of the money. So uh, Jackie, you were first, then Lorraine. Yes, I just wanted to ask if if those posts that you've just gone on further to say um they're the ones that you're going to work with walkers are welcome to see where there might be duplication is that right 
it, it, I don't think there will be duplication, but we're working with Walkers of Welcome to see whether we can integrate these posts with other walking routes that Walkers of Welcome want. It may well be that from a post, a walk into the countryside happens, or from a, a particular post, you know, a walk to a pub happens when we can do it. Um, so it won't be and walkers and welcome, it will be complimentary. Sorry. Would this be a good point to um, remind us where the nine points were again, because it's been a while since- We we've... will have to dig that map out and send it to people so that um, we can quickly refresh that because it, it's certainly I'm not- very happy to send, to send that information round after the meeting. Yeah. Um, okay. Lorraine. Um, thank you, Chairman. I was only going to add, as I'm the outside body rep for SODC on this committee, it would be useful if I was um, given a heads up of meetings with SODC, otherwise ah. it's pointless me being the official outside body rep. I'm not the Henley Town Council, I was appointed by the leader of SODC. Lorraine, I completely <laughs> apologise for that. Um, it, it was it was overlooked by me, and it won't happen again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry, I apologise. Yes, that's okay. And that's why I wasn't at previous meetings because I didn't get informed of the meetings. Well, in fact, yeah. we haven't had any previous yeah. ones. This was Just the first that, August, yeah. that um, Simon Hill proactively st started, and I invited David okay. Dickey and I invited Fiona, but I, 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 I. I, yeah. I I agree with you and I apologise to you. It's okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's the update on the walking signs. Um, so we're now going to go on to item six, which again is a lump of good news. Um, the initiation of the Henley Car Club. Um, first thing to say, and then I'm going to hand over to Fiona, who's been doing quite a lot of work on this, that um, we have to thank David McEwen, Dave McEwen, for the three and a half years' work he's done on this um, in bringing it to fruition. Um, the car club as a concept, I think, has come to fruition in COVID times because people are thinking, do I need a car? Um, if I had access to a car for the journeys that I buy it as I go along, then in fact, it could well be that the time has come. The reason why it's taken such a long time is because we were originally thinking of two electric, fully electric cars. And um, because SODC and to a large extent OCC have been slow in actually getting charging points around the town, or getting the protocols ready, uh, that in fact we, we, we've been stagnating for a year on it. Um, the idea now is to go for hybrid cars, so they're self-charging, so they're more flexible, they've got greater mileage, and um, I, I think it will be successful. Again, in summary, South Oxfordshire at the meeting this afternoon agreed that they would 50% fund it. So I'm now going to hold over to Fiona because she has written the report. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Stefan. Yes, yeah, so this is a project um, which will help meet the council objectives in its declaration of a climate emergency and also towards reducing air pollution. Um, Dave McEwen, as Stefan has mentioned, has done a huge amount of work on this and um, I've been meeting recently with CoWheels and to help and move the project forward. Um, the proposal is for two um, Toyota Yaris hybrid cars to, uh, to be based within the centre of Henley at a location most convenient for the early adopter audience within Henley. Uh, so the idea is that if the councils, um, Henley Town Council, and we now know supported by SODC, uh, can start the project off for the, its first, what we think will be two years, and we will time limit it to two years, then hopefully the project will by then have enough subscribers that it will be self-sustaining. And our analysis of the, the market and the audience 
for car club users within Henley makes us think that um, that will be the case. We're hoping to go for a launch uh, in the spring as, as we're coming out of lockdown and perhaps people are starting to try and uh, restart those cars that have been sat around for a while and wondering whether you know they, they really need that, that second car. Um, the benefits of, of having the car club are around air pollution, reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions and saving residents money on, on running a car that they, they use infrequently. Um, so although uh, the council has already approved the decision to have a car club, we felt that because it had been a while since that decision had been made and some of the numbers have changed, I wanted to present to you um, the latest numbers for you um, to confirm that decision. Uh, and I was just going to pull up the um, resolution there. I can. It's fine, Fiona. I'll uh, I'll take it from there. That's okay. Thank you. Um, so that's fine. Yes. Um, uh, and the idea of this is that um, we already know that parking in the middle of Henley is at a premium. Um, people you know, have difficulty parking. So therefore, if we reduce the number of cars, it's estimated that eight cars are taken off the road by a car club car because they can just you know, um, you know, hire it whenever they want to rather than that. Uh, one moment here. Um, so I'm going to propose from the chair that we, um, and the wording is at the bottom of page eight, by the way, it's recommended that the working group resolve to recommend to planning committee because we're a sub of the, of the planning committee. So they will ultimately take the decision to approve the initiation of a handy car club supplied by co-wheels at a total of 23,982, excluding that. Uh, to come from SIL and confirmation of parking space locations to come back to other committees as necessary following further investigation. We have still got to finalise the uh, the parking of uh, where where the cars are going to go. So one moment, I have seen you here. Yeah. And that will be 50% funding. So 12,000 from SODC and 12,000 from, uh, from Henley. The idea is that this car club is up and running. It's we've started it for two years, and then it will become self-sufficient thereon. So I propose that from the chair, and I will need a seconder to actually take it forward to debate. Lawrence, okay, yep. So Lawrence is seconding. Um, committee, it's now open for debate. Um, Ian was first, then. Lorraine, Ian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Thank you. Yeah, if, if two of the cars are being hired and somebody else wants to hire it, they're not going to be able to hire, are they? Now, you know where oh. I live. I use the public bus. I walk down the town, I walk back, or sometimes I catch a local bus. All depends how I feel. But I leave my car in my house. Now, if somebody wants to leave their car in the house and hire this car, or five or six pounds an hour, whatever it is. Now, to me, that is personally a waste of money and a waste of taxpayers' money by having two cars in Henley sat there doing nothing for two years. That's, well, all my, we can... that's my view. Okay, fine. Thank you, Ian. Lorraine? Sorry, yeah. I, I, I must resist tipping in. So, fine. Lorraine? <laughs> yeah, I... I just wondered if we'd uh, also investigated vans with this, because it seems to be growing in popularity to have van hire in with the car clubs, because there's quite a few people that might want to use a van for uh, small bits of work they're doing if their van's suddenly out of operation, or that they want to move uh, small pieces of furniture, something like that. But that seems to be growing in popularity and it might be something that there's a need in Henley. We will, let, let, let's get this over the line, Lorraine. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just is, a thought. Yeah, no, 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 it's an excellent thought. Um, 
I will. I'll pop it to Dave McEwen <laughs> for further thought. Patrick. Yeah, just to say, uh, Ian, that, that in reply to Ian's comment, that uh, Lewis, which is not dissimilar to Anley as a town, it's you know similar centre, a little bit bigger population. They started off with two, I think, cars, and within the two-year period, they had already increased to four because they were so popular with particularly younger people that uh, can't afford to have and to park a car in the town centre. They're living in, in, in flats where they haven't got uh, space to park a car. And it's so popular with that group that, uh, they, uh, that, that they've had to double, you know, they had to accelerate the rate at which these were, they were rolling these out. So it was a, it was a really good success. And I think, uh, I think that it's, it's, a, it's a trial period. And I think that we will find that during that trial period that that will happen. I'm looking forward to it because I want to get rid of one of my, you know, we've got two cars, we don't need them. What I need is an occasional extra car. And to be honest, what we're learning with COVID is it doesn't really matter when. So if the car's booked on one day, then you book it a next day for a trip to Reading or, or go shopping or whatever. It's not, it's not such a hardship. Uh, and I think they will be incredibly successful. Well, I'll, I'll just, just have to wait and see, Patrick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, Lawrence, then David. Uh, yeah, I was just going to reiterate some of the points. You said you am um, 33 years old myself, uh, got rid of my car a couple of years ago because it seemed pointless to have it sat on the drive. And I think unless we start making these steps to enable people to change behaviour, you know, we won't enable the change you know, until we've got a couple of cars and then you know just like you're saying patrick five six ten twelve you know we need to take the first few steps and at many meetings now we've discussed you know what the town's going to look like in 10 or 20 years time and these are the fundamental small steps to making the big changes towards how we're going to travel and think about travel in the future so i think it's a it's a crucial step and let's start driving that change now david yeah almost on a similar vein Co-wheels market are younger people. And the second thing is they're actually quite a successful company. So something must be going right. And we've got to grow and learn. Thank you. Okay, Ian? If the, uh, if, if the two cars are spend 50% of their time idle, parked in a parking place somewhere, uh, you may think that's 50% uh, of a waste of time. If you consider all your individual cars, you know, including Ian Clark, when he walks down into town not to catch the bus, um, his car is going to be actually idle about 95% of the time, at least. Uh, and so it represents a much better use of a parking space uh, uh, than it does for a private car, which is hardly used. And the other point I've got to make is, uh, is in the form of a question, but I, I think I've got a conclusion as well. Uh, we, we'll be making the capital investment in the cars, the, the town council, and if, after two years, the scheme doesn't work, I say I think it will, I'm strongly supportive of it. If it doesn't work after two years, uh, we'll still have an asset of two cars, which we could sell off. We are not, we are not spending 20,000 or 5,000 per car per year, uh, money which is going to be lost. It'll only be lost, it, it won't be lost. The worst that can happen is that we, we lose the depreciation over two years. Uh, and the experiment doesn't work. And I think David Dickey had it exactly right. You've got to, uh, you've got to try things out. You've got to learn. And uh, as Lawrence said, uh, these things, we, we have to try new ideas. Uh, okay. So I strongly support that we go ahead with this. All right. Uh, Jackie first, then Ian, I'll allow you to come back. Yeah, Jackie? A uh, question, please. I'm just wondering if there's potential in the future building on the success of this scheme, uh, to sell energy back to the grid later on, particularly when you go to full electric cars? Yes. The, um, yeah. I will uh, explain that, but I don't want to divert from it. That um, Oxfordshire have got a great big plan um, for um, certainly electric vehicles and electric vans that um, when electric vans are, sorry, I'll, I'll deal with, uh, sorry, Jackie, if you'll forgive me, I will, I will deal with that in a slightly extended form, but, but not just at the moment. So, Ian, sorry. Um, so the answer is yes to you, Jackie, by the way. Right, Ian, 
final comment and then yeah. we will go for a vote. Well, right. Councillor Reisman just said, if you get a car for two years and they're standing 50% idle, at the end of that two years, we can sell them. So basically we're purchasing them straight yeah. out, of, out of woodwork. So they rent this cool club, whoever it is, who's renting them out to the council, at the end of the day, we, they're going to belong to us at the end of the two years. And by then, they'll be having 100,000 miles on the clock and won't be worth nothing. Thank you. Yeah, OK, right. OK, right, we've done that. Um, I, I'll just sum up very briefly. I do like uh, Lawrence's comment that this is about behaviour change. And if we, we, we have to start on the road somewhere. And fine, if um, Patrick has alluded that in Lewis, it's grown and grown and grown and grown. Um, and um, and if we start and it doesn't work, it, we, we haven't lost anything. It, if it starts and grows and grows so that it does take cars off the roads of Henley, then it's got to be a good thing. So uh, the proposal is at the bottom of page eight, and I read it out earlier. So I'm going to go for a vote uh, for, against, and abstain. So, all those in favour of the recommendation, please show your hands now. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, all those against? Uh, Ian, honourably, yes, one. And abstentions? Kester, thank you very much. Okay, so that motion is passed, but it still has to be approved, ratified by the planning committee going forward. Right, moving on. Um, seven, um, cycling routes um, will be verbal. It, it's partly because RNA have asked us about this. And, um, and I have to apologise to Lawrence, who sent me an email a couple of days ago to say, what are we going to do about this? And I didn't reply, so I apologise. There are two cycling routes within Henley that Lawrence and I are, will only say we're working on it, and I'm sure as part of the active travel, we will get the funding from Oxfordshire to do it. So I've got no news on that. But it's long been an ambition that we have a cycle route from Henley to Shipley, which is either along the Reading Road or along the Thames Path. Um, Lawrence is a cycling expert, so I'm going to... Um, Lawrence, give us your wisdom, please. Well, yeah, I was just going to say on that, the only route, obviously, you know, Shiplake at the moment is technically along the Thames Path, which, as we know, is really meant for, uh, really meant for walking, uh, unless there is an area that is cyclable. A lot of families at the moment, uh, you know, youngsters all the way through to the oldies, do use that as a good cycling route at route Potchart and Bowley. It's a bit muddy and wet at the moment, if you, uh, if you try. <laughs> I'd, wear some, uh, I'd wear some waterproof clothing. The main road, I do cycle it all the time, but it's a terrible road to cycle along. It's super super busy and very fast, uh, you know, past the new Braemont office there. Uh, doing a bit of research onto it. I can find something online that Shipley Village, you know, did. Uh, I can't find the date on it, but they've done a survey where the fourth most important thing ranked, you know, what residents wanted was a cycleway that, you know, kind of follows the railway track uh, there. And looking at it, they seem to have done quite a lot of investigation uh, with Sustrans and their county councillor. So I was going to try and find out if someone on Shiplake Parish Council knows more as to exactly when they did that, how far they got and why it stalled effectively. Because I just can't find a date or who did that. So I'll try and make some inquiries, find out how far they got with that and then see if we can follow it up effectively because yeah. they seem to say that they had found funding there all the way up to county level so i'm sure if they're if they're willing to do it and we're willing to do it you know we can start from each end and meet halfway um yeah. okay. is all i can recommend unless right. anyone on here already knows whom from shipplate council may have done that or may have looked yeah. into it uh we'll um well we'll do we'll do the investigation with councillor both following the shiplate yeah. shiplate parish councillor and um, and I think bring a report back to this committee with, with, with the facts. Ian, Ian Reisman. In Ian. 2013, 
um, Hellian transition, and uh, as as they then as we then were, and um, and the town council had discussions with uh, Tudor Taylor at Ship Lake uh, Council. He was the uh, chair of the council at the time. I think he's no longer a councillor, but he was very keen. Uh, and, the, and was leading the parish council into uh, investigation and, and funding the, uh, the uh, cycle path. At the time, there was hope that there would be a cycle path, cycle path possible along the uh, uh, electrified railway line, but of course that, uh, uh, that, that, that's died to death, sadly. Um, but, uh, but Tudor Taylor was certainly the enthusiastic uh, proponent uh, uh, back in those days. I, I, can't, I can't remember as much has happened since. Do you have an email for him? Uh, yes, I can probably dig that out. I'm sure if I you can. If you do have it, that, that would promote my... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll do that. I'll, I'll pass those on. Who, who would like that contact besides you, Lawrence? Do you want it, uh, Fiona? Uh, Lauren, yeah, Lawrence and Fiona. Yeah, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, Lawrence, on to do with the Thames Park, I mean, it's a, it, it's a lovely route, uh, as you know, because I bumped into you one day when we were cycling. <laughs> um, the... You go down to, to Marsh Lock and you walk over the, the wooden footway. You don't cycle. But then there's the field between there and Bolney Lane. I mean, it would be absolutely lovely to have a walking path and next to it a cycling path. So is that uh, Strassenbach's land or...? Yeah, it's, it's his land, but then the Thames path and the bit next to the river is uh public land as it were so anything up to the path is his the path and beyond is then a public right of way yeah um, so it's one of those you know they can stop you picnicking on their actual land but you can do what you want on the path and the bit towards the bank as it were and it was so popular this summer there was tens of you know, hundreds of families who used it to picnic and swim and stuff like that so i think improving that path would be to the benefit of the whole town anyway uh, it's a horribly uneven surface as is so it'd be worth having a chat with us about that and see whether he would help us. Yeah. I'll just Thanks. point out there's the better flooding down there at the moment. That's all flooded. It's oh, yes. Well, the footpath in there would be washed away. Well, well, when it's three foot deep in water, we'll put up a sign to say, please do not cycle on this path. Absolutely. Uh, yep. You're right. So, Jackie. You're on mute, sorry. Sorry about that. No. Um, we're still keen to develop the path that runs parallel to the A4130 between Lower Assenden and Bix. We have not found a way forward with that yet. Um, so it might be interesting for us to understand better Ship Lake's experience when you more on that to see if we can learn anything um and of course if we do manage to get that done we you know it could look to be extended then out to nettle bed in some way because what you really want is is routes coming out of henley as well as within henley yeah yeah right i'm going to close this part of the conversation because clearly well lawrence and i have got you know, some work to do with ship late to, to bring some information back to the committee so uh, that's fine okay we're moving now on to um eight um location promotional materials for cycling routes and uh, i'm going to hand over to fiona to talk to this um it's page nine of your papers um and it's I mean, the question is should we promote these site new cycle racks and other stuff. Fiona, take it Thank from you. Me. Thank you, Stefan. Yes, this goes back to um, last summer. Um, the council recommended eight locations for new cycle racks, um, and they were installed by the county council with funding from the Active Travel 2020 project, and those um, racks are now in place. And the locations are listed at section 3.2 one of the reports on page nine, as Stefan has said. Um, there has been some discussion about, you know, whether those are perhaps the optimum locations and whether they could be moved. And I would advise you that whilst it is physically possible um, to move the racks, a strong case would have to be made to, to ensure that it was value for money and to persuade OCC at this stage. 
to move those. Um, I would say that they advise you at least there is a, a stronger case for promoting the use of those racks and making them more discoverable um, to people. So you might want to consider whether you'd like to um, create a cycling map and investigate street signage um, to help cyclists um, use the racks uh, around the town. Fiona, could I, so I've only just spotted this, page 10 of the recommendation. <laughs> it does actually say it does not recommend reallocating yeah, so actual travel. So okay. It doesn't recommend remove, moving them at the there moment. Was a, there was a suggestion that yeah. some of the locations weren't quite optimal and they could be moved. Yeah. I'm suggesting that you agree not to do that. Fine. But yes, I understand that. And I, I would, well, I, I'll, well, I think we'll have a, a discussion about this, then I'll, I'll, <coughs> and I'll move the recommendation if we need to. Um, so it might depend on moving the racks. I think they've only just put, been put in, so leave them where they are. If, it, it, if after COVID, then we actually find that a rack is in the wrong place, then we can unbolt it and, re, and move it and relocate it somewhere else. But I think we we should actually create a cycling map for Henley, and um, uh, which maybe would inc incorporate the walking posts as well. Um, and the idea is that you're implying to people in Henley, well, don't take your car, cycle down to Henley because we've got all these wonderful racks, or walk into Henley. Um, David, do you have something interesting to contribute to this particular one? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm just going through my head right now. If you incorporate the walking pose, I, then it becomes an active travel map, right? Which I think is a good thing to do. Um, but I also, when I, someone said, to, I was locking my bike up against one of these things in the town the other day, and someone said, what are you doing with that? And I said, well, this is a cycle rack. And oh, that's what it is. So I actually feel that, in a way, sort of labelling them in a way, <laughs> with some, no, but with something which has a town council logo on, so you're promoting yourselves as well. So Because people will notice that. They see the badge, oh, what's that? Oh, this is a cycle rack. I don't think a lot of people are realising. I mean, I find one or two of them always empty um, because there's, I mean, you've got a lot of them right now. But the ones just in the right in the centre of town are often used up and you can't use them. So they are being used, but the other ones down at the bottom of New Street, you know, all these other odd locations, I find there's never a bike. And therefore you need to put, if you put someone and say, these all belong to our active travel thing, any town council, please do it and encourage people to cycle and walk, I think could be part of it. Okay, Patrick? Uh, Lawrence was here before me, I think. Oh, sorry, Lawrence, then Patrick. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, I, th I think it, it will take time. You know, I think as a regular cyclist myself, you know, you chain your bike or you lock your bike to the racks that you <gasps> cycle past and you see when, you know, entering a town. So it depends on the route you use. Um, obviously, I work in the Grey Show car park and the two in there, you know, they do get used. The ones next to the clothes bank and the one opposite where the tree was does get used. Um, you know, I was kind of sceptical about the New Street one to start with. But again, I think, you know, we should give it at least a year or so for people to get familiar with where they are. So, you know, they start to be like, yep, you know, that one's great or this one's good or this one I can sit by the river. I think it does take time. I do, you know, I think it's comical that people can't recognize a bike rack, but now that you have said it, you know, potentially a, you know, Henny Town Council logo and, you know, a picture of a bike on the floor underneath it or something like that could make it at least obvious or make it seem, you know. Um, you get but, more people, yeah, yeah but Sorry, Lawrence. I shouldn't Sorry, no, David. Yeah. I, I, I'm I trying to get should, more sorry. people. To... David, David, hang about, hang about. You're too enthusiastic. It's one sorry. at a time. Right, Patrick was next. So, um, yeah, um, what, the first, first point, two points. One is, uh, could we get a comparative cost of installing a new bike rack versus moving one? Because I get the feeling probably that they won't be that different and that once we've got these racks, we might think about actually where the, if there's a lot of call for it adding a rack uh, rather than trying to move around the ones we've got that's the point one 
Second point, how about if there's a rack that's not used, we get an old bike and chain it up and then it will appear obvious to people that are passing it that it's somewhere you can chain your bike. Okay. Yep. Right. That's, uh, Ian? I think the, uh, the, the idea of branding the, uh, the bike racks is a good idea. It goes yeah. back to Lawrence's point about encouraging changes of behaviour. So you, you highlight you know, what it is, which people need some help. You highlight uh, who's doing it and why. So we're encouraging a more active life. Um, uh, I think un unless there's a positive proposal that one site is bad and another site is better, uh, leaving them where they are for now makes uh, makes sense and yeah. reviewing them in the future. Now, I, can't, I don't see any of them are obviously out of place. Uh, the recommendation says the creation of a cycling map. I mean, I'd suggest that uh, why not a cycling app? Uh, I mean, if you're a cyclist, you go into town and you uh, you, you pull out your phone and you look to see where, where an app, well, where they are, which not only uh, is more convenient rather than having to find the map when you're actually cycling, but it also means if we do move them or add to them, uh, it, it's a trivial matter to, to update the app, whereas maps would have to be reprinted, and that's not, uh, they're not something that's very su sustainable. Uh, and lastly, on sustainability, I, I feel a bit mean about this, but I, I was always disappointed to, uh, uh, to, to see for many years. It's nice to see the space used now, but we chopped down a large, nice-looking tree, which was uh, needed, needed to be chopped down uh, in that corner, and I, I wanted to see another tree there, but I'm very happy for another tree uh, to be used, uh, planted instead. You know, I think when you chop down a tree, you should always put one in. Can we make sure that we have replaced that tree in one form or another uh, in, in the town? And lastly, uh, the wording of the recommendation is fine to me. If I say I would add app to map, but the first part will be a bit clearer if you said, uh, we recommend not relocating, uh, and so that's the negative bit, uh, and then the rest is all a positive recommendation. Uh, Ian. It, just, it, it looks like we're not we're recommending not doing any of that. Yeah. So, Ian, uh, so can I'm you propose the, with those two small amendments so that recommendation? Ian, could you could you make that a proposal? Yeah. And just talk it so through. My proposal is the recommendation on there with the following changes: uh, change, um, remove, uh, does not words two and three uh, and uh, change and change recommend to recommends not and secondly changing map to map or app right okay so at the moment we're saying let's leave the racks where they are and not move them and you know, add the app and the map and then Fiona can work on that and get costings for for that going forward. Yeah. So that's a proposal. Uh, seconded. Lawrence, are you seconding? Okay. And do you want to speak, Lawrence? No, I I think that's great. Just reassess in twelve months' time, and you know, a map or app, perfect. I think it's a great idea. The app bit. Well done, Ian. Really good suggestion. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go for a vote on this then. Um, so it's to leave them where they are at the moment and in, in support the creation of a map stroke app and Fiona will bring that back to the next committee. So all those in favor of that. Okay, and that's okay. And against and abstention. Kester. Kester, what have you got against cycling? <laughs> um. I have, in fact, got something against it, but my abstentions are solely because I think these are matters for Henry. And <laughs> right, okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. The principled abs abstention. Thank you. Yeah. We like right. having a view on Harpston, so you should have a view on Henley. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't don't feel shy about straying into our. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Kester's <laughs> got a three wheeler. Yeah. No heart and cyclists allowed. <laughs> right, okay. Um, uh, nine. So we've got two more to go on this. Um, National Walking Routes Project. Um, I, I've, I've looked through this and um, 
as many of you know, the idea is to create a national map where you could walk from wherever to wherever to wherever. And I think it's it's a really positive thing that we should get involved with. And on page 12, we've got the recommendation, which says, the council supports the Slow Ways project. It will promote it by encouraging local volunteers to get involved with the project and help walk, review, test routes in the area. The idea is that locals say, well, there's a route here, you test it, and then you submit it to the, you know, the national database. It will also include slow ways in its plans and policies and other initiatives where appropriate. Um, so any, I, I, I'll make that as a proposal. Is it seconded? Ian, yeah, okay, thank you. Right, um, anyone want to discuss, chat? Ian. The only comment, can I make a comment, which is that um, it, it's, there's a possible tie-in here with the registration of footpaths, which the town council sort of started getting involved with through the Open Spaces Society a couple of years ago. And I, I'm not sure how well that project has gone, but there's clearly a potential overlap here between the, the routes which are identified as part of the Slowways project and the uh, attempts that we're, we're doing against the six-year deadline now for, I think, uh, to make sure that all the local uh, paths are, are registered uh, uh, as, as public footpaths. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, an active process on that in the, in the town council at the moment. No, nor do I. Ian? I've read in the national, national papers that they're doing this across the whole of the UK, combining that with walking paths and various routes, canals, walks and things like that. The whole country, they're all going to get in together. So let's get involved and do that for our town and surrounding villages. Thank you, Ian. Lawrence? Excuse my naivety, but how does this differ to just an OS map? I, as in, I use the OS to go cycling or walking. I've got the app on my phone. It's awesome. Why do we need another format of already showing the same walkways that OS have already detailed? I think it's because there are local local routes that are not on the OS map, and it, this will be in addition to it. Um, it is my reading of the way it started, and it's rather like Wikipedia. It's a mo it's a movement uh, going forward to so that if you wander into County Durham, you could look at this app and you could say, "Oh, there's a, there's a good route." Yeah. So it's it's encouraging walking going forward. Um, I might be wrong. Patrick, then Ian, and yeah. then Lawrence, you can come back. Yeah. My, my understanding is, is that it's actually to encode local knowledge. So where we know of good footpaths, they are all on the OS map. Well, hopefully they are. They're not actually. And that's one of the things that Ian Reisman is talking about, is that people think that the, 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 the OS maps are, are comprehensive and they're not. And the, 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 I, I fully support the project that he's talking about, which is to discover the paths um, that, that, that have, are historically used as footpaths and haven't been registered. And so, you know, we are going to lose those in six years' time. There will be no recourse. So I think uh, I, I'd strongly recommend that the, speaking to the, the motion, I would say that the last part of it is very vague and if I were planning I would throw it out because it's an open-ended commitment to all sorts of initiatives and I suggest that we, uh, we we actually limit it at this moment to the initiative that that, that Ian suggested um, and we say that that include the slowways in its plans and policies and the initiative to uh, uh, Ian do you have some good words for that? I think see, to, to formally register uh, unregistered uh, footpaths, which are public right, which are public rights of way. Yes, thank you. Because those are the pressing, those are the pressing projects, um, and we, I think, we could always put another motion in front of planning if we had another interesting one to add to it. <laughs> but it, I, I, I'm just thinking that we should keep this concise so that planning know exactly what it is that they're signing up to. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to to um, change the proposals along the wording that Patrick suggests, which seemed very sensible. Okay, Lawrence. 
Can I just add, try and answer Lawrence's question, which is, you know, why is this different from the Ordnance Survey? And I, I, I have, this is a speculation. I have no idea because I didn't know about this project until five minutes ago. I imagine that you, what you would have would be a website or an app or some sort of software solution, which, uh, you know, like Google Maps, you put in where you are or where you, or where you want to go from and you put in where you want to go <laughs> to and it highlights all the uh, all the different potential routes that you could take on along recognized footpaths which is something that I, I don't think you have I, I am an ordnance so I do own a few electronic ordnance survey maps but I don't think they've got anything that's um, that's like that no you don't yeah yeah uh, Lawrence quick, go for it I was just a quick follow up on Patrick and Ian's discussion if I may um We've already discussed the, the finding footpaths. We're already doing that on a committee or we did something about it a year or two ago, if I'm right, Councillor Reisman. I'm sure that's come up before that we raised awareness on that. I just can't remember under which committee or what we did for it. We had training and we were looking for volunteers and I, and I suspect it may have sort of started off enthusiastically. And I, and I think we should, you know, Patrick's suggestion gives us an excuse to reinvigorate it, perhaps hold another uh, meeting where we can convene uh, uh, the search for, for further further uh, volunteers to, think, to seek out I think the, uh, the with, I think Glenn may have been the councillor looking into it, being probably our keenest walker. So maybe worth following up with him <laughs> to see where he got yeah. with it and picking it up from there. <laughs> It, it, yeah, Glenn, Glenn is probably the best bet. I'll, uh, that, that's a good idea. I'll, 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 I'll have a go at uh, mentioning it to him. Roy's road to the monster's arms. That, oh. That's an easy walk. Oh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, guess I can give you five yeah. cards to the monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so we're just starting on this. Um, this, I mean. This I see as sort of like a national movement that we're that we're latching onto, and volunteers grow it, uh, grow it as it as it goes on. So I, I think we we should we should encourage it. You know, make sure there's well enough council time, but no, it really should be driven by volunteers. This going forward. So the proposal is um, the council supports the slow waste project. It will promote it by encouraging local volunteers to get involved with the project and help walk review and test routes in the area. The last sentence we're chopping and we're adding to investigate the registration of footpaths. Help me out, Ian. Uh, uh, footpaths and public rights of way. Which uh, which are in need of registration as part of the and I can't remember the name of the there's, there's a there's, there's a government act which is setting a deadline for this that that yeah. uh, expires in I think four years time now uh, so if you could uh, insert the, the the suitable framework and Ian actually seconded it so that's good Lawrence before oh, we go to the back. No, I was just going to say, following up on uh, Patrick's point about it being a bit wishy-washy, I think it's the encouraged bit that's a bit wishy-washy. So whether it's uh, to set up or form a volunteers group, you know, we kind of, we almost need to make sure that Glenn uh, sets up a volunteers group and, <laughs> you know, we actually have a group who can come back to us with something that's doing something. And then obviously we can encourage them. But I think until the group is formed, just writing encourage, it will just drift if we just convene a meeting and, and ask for volunteers, then I think we're carrying out our uh, our enabling role because we were. I mean, uh, the sixteen councillors and other members of this committee, we are going to go and walk all the routes or know or know all about them. But we, but, but we can encourage other people to do that. It's it's a sort of it's a sort of crowdfunding isn't quite the right word. What's the right word? It's a sort yeah, of. Uh, let's, um, let's leave the wording as it is for the moment, Lawrence. But what we will do after this meeting, we will strongly encourage um, Glenn to get involved with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll vote yeah. for that one. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that can be reported back. We put Glenn oh. in the uh, proposal. Okay, I'm going to go for a vote <laughs> on, on this then. So all those in favour of the wording that Ian's cobbled together, um, all those in favour. Yeah. Okay. And against... None and abstentions unanimous. Thank you. Right. Right. Ten. Um, developing an infrastructure for electric charging points in Henley. And it's 
And Fiona, you'll have to help me out with this because you sit between this committee and the Climate Emergency Committee. On the, on the agenda, it says, 10, to consider a report from the electrical charging infrastructure from Climate Emergency and to appoint a working group to develop a strategy. Is that going to be a working group between this and Climate Emergency? No, the um, so what's happened is the Climate Emergency Working Group um, has started thinking about electric vehicle charging strategy and put some ideas to um, the planning committee and they asked the, the committee to agree that those should be taken, taken forward but suggested that really because it was you know, an electric vehicle charging strategy, really the strategy, the transport strategy group was the most appropriate group to take it forward from there. So the planning committee are asking this working group to agree um, to take the development of an electric vehicle charging strategy forward, but I'm quite sure that members of the climate emergency working group will, will help and support um, if required. But the idea is that creation of this and implementation of the strategy would, would be owned by this group as it fits Okay. most logically into your terms of reference. Okay. Um, so the, the discussion is whether we want to set up a, a small working group, a subset of this committee. Yeah, there may be other, other members from the climate emergency to help us, but um, to, um, to come up with you know, the implementation of um, electric charging points across Henley. Lawrence. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, Fiona's done fabulous work so far. And, you know, I think definitely it's it's a yes. Uh, you know, the more you, you know, I know that they, I know that many, you know, on this meeting tonight have done a lot of research into it. But you know, the more you look into it, the more the needs change from streets to parking to visitors to residents. Each has specific requirements. Whether it's slower charging, faster charging, faster charging is going to be preferential in some spaces and slower charging on residential streets could actually be okay. So I think I think the nuances to, between different areas in the town, I think a specific group to look at this and help to implement a you know, town-wide strategy again would be, you know, would be fantastic. Okay, great, thanks Jackie. Remember this time. Um, it, it's worth saying that County Council are developing a county-wide strategy for EV charging and uh, they're taking it to cabinet in March to produce policy within six months. In yeah. terms of some infrastructure for Henley, um, a priority is to look at uh, those houses that um, will have to charge their cars on street, they don't have off street parking and that's the middle priority within the OCC overall strategy. So I, I'm sort of seeing that this working group to be set up is, is almost to be ready to, to work with the strategy that comes out of the county, if I'm looking at that right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, no, you're right. We've had um, two or three meetings with the county um, um, with Tony Hoskins actually, um, to try and shape the policy that's eventually going to come out of the county and, and go forward. So the idea of this group would you know, work closely with the county and um, you know, try and get real good good change going into, um, into Handy. Um, I, I will just pick up just for a moment, if you'll forgive me, um, Jackie, you asked an earlier question about you know, whether can, electricity can be fed into the grid. Um, the county are thinking of a model like this. Imagine at the top of Kings Road car park, you know, near the wall behind the houses, there are a load of bays already set up for charging. People go and park there with vans and cars and when they plug in electricity goes out of the van into the grid 
So it you know it sucks energy out of the battery of the van, and it goes into the grid to feed our homes and power our televisions and kettles. Then, so it drains the battery to a certain extent. Then, at two in the morning, the charging routine routine switches on. So then, in fact, we're going to in the future be using cars as a reserve of energy. Um, it means that we don't have to build as many power stations and we don't have to build as much infrastructure in getting electricity. So electricity, the, the challenge has always been, and that's why it's taken such a long time. Our national grid is great at providing electricity from a power station down to your kettle, but it's not very good in the reverse direction getting energy from our homes back into the grid to be used. Um, so, so that's what the whole of the, the strategy is going to be. So I digress on that. Um, and I completely agree with Lawrence's proposal that we set up a working group to work on this. Any more comments, please? Ian? No, no you just asked me a question, Mr. Chairman. You just said of putting the batteries sucking it all out and then recharging at three o'clock in the morning so in the theory the person who having it charged up is going to pay more because you sucked half of his juice out then you're going to be applied fully so who's paying the most for it well what uh, there will be there'll be a computer to say we've sucked 20 units out of your battery Sorry. and we'll replace 20 units free of charge and then we'll top up and charge you later on so it, yes much. it will be yeah Patrick? Yeah, it's actually better than that. Uh, if you suck the units out at peak, you will get probably 20 or 30 pence a kilowatt hour for your battery, for the electricity you give. When you're charging at two o'clock in the morning, you're probably buying it at between two and five pence a kilowatt hour, and possibly even being paid to take it on a windy yeah. day. And so you will actually, you could actually plug your van in get the residue that you've got left over sucked out during the peak, you know, when everyone's boiling their kettles uh, and turning the telly on. And then uh, you end up in the morning finding out that you're actually being paid some money to charge your car, your van. So, you know, it's, that's the future. Uh, and, and it's a very interesting one. And it's a, it's going to be, you know, if that, we can get that to work, it will be a very constructive one. Just to say to this working group that, it's going to be quite a challenge, I think, because Oxfordshire County Council is looking county wide and they're not looking at the nuances that we've got, particularly with on street parking in Henley, with the lack of availability and what's the chances of someone parking outside their house. So I think don't underestimate the amount of work we've got to do. I'm very keen to be involved in it. And I think it's important being on the climate working group and on this group uh, that, uh, that I, you know, I put my hand up. Uh, but don't underestimate the work. You know, we've, we've got a lot to do to fight to get the right system here in Henley. Okay, right. Okay. So it, it, it calls to me to um, ask for, for volunteers. Um, can I have an indication of who initially would like to be on this group? Uh, We'll have to meet, and then we will have to you know, shape what we're going to do um, going forward. So, um, Patrick, you've indicated. Yep. Lawrence? If, if we can meet towards the end of the day, that would be preferable. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, what? 11 o'clock at night, you mean? Well, it's just office hours are a challenge. <laughs> oh, no, no, absolutely. Four, yes. five, six or something would be good. Now, I... I this group shouldn't be the whole of the committee. The idea of having a working group is you've got three or four or, or four or so. So we've got Lawrence, Patrick, Ian, you mentioned, and Jackie. Um, to be honest, I think that's enough initially. We can call on other people. Um, call on me if you need me. Yes. I'm Which sorry you mean, the subject. So yes. but, uh you know, I, uh, what I agree I, with you, you've got enough probably to start. Yeah, we've got, we've got enough to start. 
and I think the the working group needs to be very smart to actually identify the projects to work on and call in the expertise from where from wherever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's okay. a lot of sub so, Fiona, Patrick, um, Ian, Which you? Jackie, I, I would and say, Lawrence. Oh, sorry, Stefan. I would say that if somebody with more knowledge on this than me wants to come on it, then I'm happy with that too. I, I, I think it's important that you're there because you you represent the villages near Henley and and I think the expertise needs to go to you know, Bix and Assendon, Harpston and Stoke Row and, and all the other villages. So you you've got to so no, I think it, it would be it would be good if you could. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Right. Stefan, gonna, which uh, Ian did you mean there? I, I don't think I thought to. I think Ian was, Clark. We, you meant Ian, Ian Clark. Clark. Yeah, right. Okay. Ian, Ian Clark. Yeah. Ian well, said I'm, I'm happy to, to to stand away from that. Well, that's good. we we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna fit batteries to his Jaguar. And 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 I'd encourage Ian to have a an electric Jaguar going forward. So it uh... <laughs> right. I prefer to okay. walk. <laughs> that's that's it. well. We made really good positive progress, certainly on the car club and the um, and the air quality monitoring and the walking signs. So um, yeah, things are things are happening. So um, I will pencil in the beginning of March for a um, for a uh, the next transport strategy group meeting, and the the subgroup to do with electrical charging will circulate an email and make sure Lawrence, what's the best time for you? Uh, four or five onwards, great. Just whenever that works for people. No, so five o'clock. That would probably fit in with Fiona's hours as well. So that would be good. Right. Okay. So we'll do that. Right. Well, thank you very much for attending tonight. And thanks for the constructive conversation. It's been a good meeting, Stephen. Yeah, good meeting. Right. Thank you. Right. Okay. Fiona.